Hey you guys, so I was sharing this graphic on social media and I just wanted to come on real quick to talk about it as an important reminder if you're going on naltrexone and the Sinclair method to cut back on drinking. So when you go on naltrexone, over time what it's going to do is really help you get your control back over alcohol because it starts to quiet the craving and the thoughts and the desire for alcohol. So a lot of people find that they're just craving alcohol less, they're thinking about it less, and they're seeing themselves um, have less of a desire for it and in general more control when they drink. But the challenge comes in when we have to meet the medication halfway and change our thoughts and our identity and our habits around drinking as well. Because for many of us, oftentimes alcohol has been so intertwined with so many different things in our life that even when naltrexone is working to quiet the desire for alcohol, our habits, our beliefs, our identity can override the medication. And so one example I had with a client recently, she had been on the medication for a while and was really feeling frustrated and was feeling like it wasn't working. And so I always like to dive in more deeply to understand what's going on. Like, why don't you think it's working? Are you taking it correctly? And she'd been following the protocol correctly, but she said one key thing that really struck out to, stuck out to me. She said, life would be boring if I didn't drink. Like, I love to go home and drink my bottle of wine every single night. So when I heard her say this, it was like an alarm bell went off because even if you're taking naltrexone correctly and you're following the protocol to a T, if you're walking around with the belief that I need alcohol to have fun and life would be boring without alcohol or I can't imagine what else I would do in the evenings without alcohol, if you're not even open to that or trying other things, then the medication is only going to take you so far. And that's why we often tell people naltrexone and the Sinclair method are a really powerful tool, but you have to meet it halfway out as well. Another common challenge I see for people is when they're using alcohol as a coping tool just to kind of escape from the stress and pressure of life. You know, honestly, alcohol is a really effective, immediate coping tool momentarily. Um, it kind of gets the job done, but we know that we have to pay for it later. And ultimately, it's not really helping us get through the challenges with life. And so through this treatment, of course, we have to learn new coping tools. I often tell people we have to strengthen our coping muscle over time. Um, to really become someone who maybe we enjoy alcohol socially or on occasion, but we're no longer that person that feels like we have to race home or run to a drink whenever life gets difficult. I think regularly getting in the practice of questioning and challenging the beliefs we have around alcohol, like alcohol makes things more fun or it's my favorite coping tool or I don't know who I'd be if I didn't have this drinking problem. All of these beliefs are so sneaky and can keep us stuck and prevent us from making progress on the treatment. We actually just did a workshop not long ago in our program talking about this very topic because as a coach the last five years and also through my own personal experience with the method, I have just seen how we can have these beliefs and even hold them unconsciously. We're not even aware of them. But when we have these beliefs that are operating under the surface that are really driving our drinking patterns, we can end up fighting the medication and really struggling and not seeing the progress that we are after. Something else I wanted to mention as well is that, of course, when we go on naltrexone and the Sinclair method, it doesn't require abstinence from alcohol. A lot of people go on this treatment to be able to reduce their drinking and drink moderately. But in order to become someone who doesn't rely on alcohol excessively and genuinely has balance and control back with alcohol, we do have to discover who we are outside of our relationship with alcohol and find new ways to cope and spend our time. Otherwise, we will just continue in the cycles that we've been in and continue to reach for alcohol and rely on alcohol on a regular basis. And that's not an experience of having control over alcohol. So just wanted to share that with you guys today. I hope that you found it helpful.